Yeah, we're good. All right, today's 19th. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, welcome to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners um, Transportation Committee meeting of November 19, 2019. I'm Kelly Robinson, the Vice Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, as well as Chair of this committee. Um, this, just as a disclaimer, this particular committee is filmed live for our citizens for later um, open record, open archive to take a look at this. We're going to go around the room before we get started just to acknowledge everybody in the room that's at the table, um, our standing members. Um, I'll start with my county administrator. Uh, county administrator Mark Teal. Jessica Theriot, assistant Mark Teal. Miguel Valentin, transportation director. Jerry Watson, Connect Douglas Transit Services director. Kenneth Connor, Chief Deputy of the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Welcome. Okay, so Miguel, we're going to go get get started. You are our director of this uh, particular committee. So, first things up is to adopt our last meeting minutes. Yes, uh, the meeting minutes of October 15, 2019. Okay. Hopefully everybody has had a chance. Jessica, thank you so much for sending them around so thoroughly and so quickly. Um, do I have a motion to adopt the meeting minutes? So Second. I got a motion second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, just as a record, Madam Chair, who's also a standing meeting uh, member of this committee, is delayed. She will eventually be here. When she gets here, we'll seat her. All right, keep going. All right, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, first item on the agenda is a presentation of school zone enforcement. Yes. Uh, Mr. Murphy Talmadge. Um, or company and company? I'll introduce him now. Okay, very good. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman uh, for, this, for this proceeding, uh, thank you guys so much for having us today. I'm Murphy Talmadge of Barnes and Thornburg. I'm here with my client, Optic Traffic, to talk today about the school zone uh, speed enforcement. Uh, <coughs> this is a product of the legislation that was passed a couple of years ago, and I'm going to let Optic Traffic come up and explain more about the product, as well as kind of what's going on. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, thank you, committee members. Uh, my name is uh, Mike Phelan. I'm our commercial general manager for Opto Traffic. So I run all of our eastern region uh, commercial sales, uh, product development, account management, um, pretty much the, the go-to guy for everything on the, on the east coast of, for our company. So uh, I appreciate the time here to present to you. I'm uh, just going to kind of go over a brief overview of kind of where Opto Traffic is and what we are, uh, where our history is, and kind of where we are in the state of Georgia with this new law that came out uh, a couple years ago. Um, so uh, feel free to interrupt me any questions you have while we're talking. I'll kind of make this as informal as we can, uh, anything that comes up about our products. Um, we're going to go over kind of our company history to begin with and then go into some of our product line uh, as we continue our conversation. Um, so like I said, we're off the traffic. Uh, we're based out of Atlanta, Maryland, so right outside of D.C. is where our headquarters is. Uh, we have offices here in Georgia, and we also have offices in um, Ohio, in Dayton, Ohio, and in Akron, Ohio. So we're kind of spread Midwest and East Coast a little bit. Um, we get started in 2005 um, from uh, our uh, parent company. It was called Sigma Space. It was a NASA corporation that was using LiDAR technology to map um, the Earth, both from space and from the ground, to do weather systems. So they would map the clouds and everything else using our LiDAR technology. So our founders, when they started, Maryland passed a law in late 2005 to use automated speed enforcement and red light cameras in school, uh, speed cameras in school zones and then red light enforcement. So they took our technology and developed it into how to be um, a leader in the industry for speed cameras. So we started in 2005 with that program, both speed and red light. Uh, we're the only company in the United States that can use overhead LIDAR enforcement. So your traditional LIDAR technology from a police standpoint is down the road where you have a handheld LIDAR device or a radar and as the vehicle passes by that, that particular piece of equipment, that's what catches the speeder. So our system is above the road, so we have very um, specific technology that can be very accurate with speed and both uh, counting vehicles and um, traffic monitoring kind of uh, systems. So uh, quick overview, two LIDAR beams that hit the roadway, the vehicle crosses the first one and starts to counter. We know the distance between both LIDAR beams, it's the second one, and we calculate that speed instantaneously and then take a photograph of that vehicle if it meets the threshold after the fact. So that's kind of how our technology works. Like I said, we're the, uh, the only company right now in the United States that can do overhead light on enforcement. The most traditional uh, speed camera enforcement is down the road. So depending on where you put that camera and how big your school zone is, you can determine on where your placements are. So um, we, uh, 
We've issued almost over 4 million citations to date for all of our clients, both in Maryland and Ohio. Uh, we've been uh, a leader in the industry, both in speed camera from a school zone enforcement. Maryland's uh, law um, is very, very similar to what Georgia has now uh, as far as limitations on where the cameras can go, dates and times of enforcement, and um, the procedure after the fact for both the citizen and from a law enforcement standpoint and how they can uh, run the program. So we're very versed and knowledgeable when it comes to starting programs with school zone enforcement as the primary responsibility, not um, from a red light or in some cases Ohio and um, Iowa where they can do automated enforcement anywhere. They can do it on highways, they can do it in any jurisdiction. That, those seem to be very controversial because it's not uh, related to a specific safety reason where school zone enforcement uh, primary reason is to slow the people down in those school zones for kids that are either crossing the street, getting off the bus, uh, parents who are bringing them in on, uh, you know, through uh, norm your normal drop off uh, for um, uh, parents. Um, right now, uh, like I said, Georgia's law is about two years old now. Um, we currently have contracts with the city of Hapeville and Banks County Sheriff's Office. So we're working to get their programs up and running uh, as we speak. Um, there are uh, some regulations that, we are, that we're following under with this law. Uh, you know, the 1,000 feet boundary from the school zone, so most of your school zones, have, you know, if they're not already signed up, you can put signs up uh, just to designate those areas on the road as school zones, 1,000 uh, feet from the school boundaries. Uh, we also recommend putting up signs for the system, so if you were to start a program, automated speed enforcement signs, flow enforcement ahead, whatever it is, at the beginning of each school zone, in every direction that someone can travel to that school zone. This is, helps your program be transparent. That way there's no uh, public perception that you're trying to hide the camera or you're trying to do it for any other reason than allowing the citizens to know that you have cameras up in that school zone. Um, for the state law here, your enforcement hours, um, state law says that it's one hour before and after school activity, including during the day that that school is in session. So any school activity um, that is going on, uh, this also can fall under your after school, um, summer programs, winter programs. So our, our recommendation and, and our experience with starting automated speed systems is having it uniform throughout the entire year. That way it's a set date, a set time. Department of Revenue. 
Now, we've already spoken to the Department of Revenue and, and started a process on our end from a company to make sure that we understand what we need to do to them to be able to process these violations through. Uh, as a vendor, uh, part of our responsibility is to uh, collect payments, and I'll go into our back office services here in a minute, but collect payments, um, process any citizen's requests, mail out your, your notices. So up to four notices will be mailed. Your first notice, uh, three um, late notices. So it could be um, you know your first late notice if any late fees are assessed, and then once the uh, vehicle registration goes to the Department of Revenue to be flagged, there's a notice that gets mailed out there. We would handle all of the, the registration holds on behalf of any client that we have, and also work with DOR to release those registrations once the citizen has paid that violation and can now renew the registration. And then also all of the, the required permits through GO, DOT. So um, Georgia DOT have put together a permit packet, so there's a, a certain process that has to be followed for any Georgia DOT roads that uh, require signatures both from um, the jurisdiction, including your school superintendent's office. Uh, they sign off on, on the permits and all that packet puts together, including traffic data, um, vehicle speeds, uh, 80 foot percentiles, all the whole traffic um, data collection that we take care of on your behalf. We submit that to the, the Department uh, of Transportation and then they'll come back and approve that particular location for a school zone enforcement. Then signs get placed and then the camera gets placed in the location where they determine is the best to in less interfere with what they have. So if there's any type of uh, installation, uh, poles, um, how it needs to be run, all that stuff is done on your behalf through us. Uh, a little bit of our back office and processing. So we have an in-house computer software that we develop that it can be accessed from any computer. It's not, it's not designed to be on one kind of server. It's all web-based. Uh, officers or the sheriff's deputies are here in uh, Douglas County will be able to log in. They can review events. They can process um, requests, take reports, um, check the systems and make sure everything's functioning properly. All the daily calibration records are all input into the system. So there's no Hand, there's nothing that the officers have to do as far as turning the systems on. They're all done remotely. They're all automated. So at the date time that those uh, begin enforcement, they'll turn on. And through the, the moment that their enforcement ends, and then the enforcement software gets turned off automatically. So there's no manual process from uh, the sheriff's office or anybody else, for that matter, that needs to log in to check our systems. It's all done a uh, very hands-off approach. Um, we also track all your financial um, information. So any payments that come in through a lockbox, uh, on your behalf that will supply web payments, uh, customer service representation, so they call a customer service number, uh, they'll get a, a local representative. Um, we are putting in local offices here in the state of Georgia. Uh, Phillips are our local representative here based around in Atlanta. Uh, but we will put in infrastructure within either you know close to or in the county that we that we work that we work with to one add jobs and two just so you guys know we're a local we, we do want to have a local presence when we when we are uh, part of a county program, uh, and we've done that both in Maryland and Ohio, everywhere, every place we've gone to, we've kind of put a local office in, just kind of helps uh, bridge the gap and, and can give you the sense that if something were to happen, we're here local, we have equipment here local, we're not outsourcing to a another company, another country, for that matter, everything is built in-house, we've built all of our equipment uh, at our office in Maryland, so we don't outsource anything, we manufacture all of our speed cameras here, so when something does go down, is equipment, it might get hit by a car, something might happen, we have, we're able to resupply that, infra, uh, that, that infrastructure in um, within a very quick turnaround and not waiting for it to come from uh, another place. Um, all of our back office support is, um, we use Englets as our service to look up registrations that are out of state. Uh, so we'll, we'll work with Georgia um, Department of Revenue and Georgia MBA to pull owner information out. We'll get a relationship with them to be able to get real-time lookups for the owner information. If not, we use MLEDs, so we, we comply with all of their security protocols. Uh, we do annual audits with them, so there's no data security breach um, scare or anything that could come up where you, you're, you're worried about anything happening on that end. Um, and like I said, again, we, we've had over four million citations issued. 1% uh, of those have gone to court. So our court requests are very, very limited based on our technology and the way we are uh, develop the program, make it very transparent. So there is no, there's no hidden uh, anything with our, with our information. Uh, you you, uh, you want to have this as transparent as possible because it is a very, could be a very controversial program to start running, especially in, in, a, in a jurisdiction, a new state down here where no one has a program running yet. Uh, there haven't been any issued citations for school zone enforcement uh, in the state of Georgia. 
uh, we're, we're close with our current two current clients now, but um, it's just a, a long process to get to the DOT and everything. Uh, again, just a quick overview of what we offer. Uh, we do all the client training, the court support, uh, all your statistics and reporting, and like I mentioned, a call center, uh, anything local that we'll put into place. Um, I'll go over briefly what our technology is. We have four main systems. Let me just, just to frame you, you, we're 15 minutes in, we usually give about 20 minutes, we do not allow. Okay, you, you well, I'll, I'll, I'll go over so quick, I'll go over right. quick. You um, mind, I'm just, that. Our, our Skyhawk system, this is our more our most portable system we have. Uh, it doesn't require any type of power. It is a um, diesel generated system that is self-contained, so it can be in place in remote locations where there may not be a power supply local, uh, close by or you maybe don't want to put a pole or any type of infrastructure in. Uses our overhead LIDAR. Um, it can be moved uh, in a matter of eight hours or less, depending on where you want it to go. So you could have it up in one location. Our tech would come out, we would move it to a new location, set it up, and start enforcing again. So it's a very mobile device um, that doesn't need to have any type of infrastructure around it. Um, again, uses our above the road LIDAR technology um, and is ideal for up to two to three lanes of traffic. So we can use one system for up to three lanes. So you could have Six lanes covered by two de two devices, three lanes in each direction. Whereas most most other jurisdictions, you might need more more devices to cover those uh, to cover that amount of lanes. Uh, our Black Hawk is more of our traditional box mounted unit. Uh, this requires batteries. Uh, it's less cumbersome as in it's not it's not overhead. Uh, it still uses uh, our lidar technology, but it's it's been developed to go down the road. So maybe more of your city environments where you don't want to put anything on a, uh, a trailer, or you may not have the ability to mount it to a pole. Uh, our Dragon Cam, so we partnered with Dragon Eye Technologies out of Norcross, Georgia, who uses uh, Dragon Eye LiDARs. And we built a handheld device for law enforcement, so you still have an officer that is initiating the, the tracking of the, of the vehicle and capturing that violation. The only difference is they're not actually going out and stopping that vehicle for a traffic stop. They're reviewing the event on the tablet, sending to us, and then we process at that as if it was a traditional um, photo enforcement device. So you have one extra step where you have an actual sworn law enforcement officer using the device uh, to capture that speeder or that violation. So it does help with um, starting a program in a, in a quick manner because your current law enforcement is already trained in LIDAR and the, the roads in Georgia, it, it, certain roads have to be designated as, um, to perform LIDAR uh, enforcement on through Georgia DOT, so those roads are already on the list. So you can still use this device on those roads that are already approved by Georgia DOT to do light on enforcement as long as they're within that school zone. And then finally, our Silver Hawks. This is our, our station, this is our um, full mounted system. Uh, again, this is our above the road lighter technology. Um, we can mount it to any pole, and as long as we have uh, your standard 110 power, we can plug it in. Uh, we're also able to you know, put it on any direct decorative poles that you know, we might need to, uh, to purchase on behalf of the jurisdictions. Um, we can wrap them, as you see this one is in up in College Park, Maryland. Uh, that can be wrapped to kind of blend in so the aesthetics is still there, which is, um, can be an important factor. Um, one thing about all of our technologies, we don't use light flash. Uh, we use IR illumination, so there's no visible flash to the driver as that citation or that violation is captured. So there's no worry of distraction. Uh, I know with red light cameras was a big thing where you see that white flash go off and it distracts other drivers around. That, that, that citizen doesn't realize or won't realize they got a citation until they get one in the mail. So there's no visible flash, so it's a very subtle uh, way of capturing the violations. And then some uh, optional features that we do offer from, from our program is we have, we have uh, ALPR technology and video, video monitoring surveillance. So we can add video monitoring, traffic surveillance, and AR, ALPRs uh, either on our devices or implement them uh, in separate locations outside of where your school zone is and add that to uh, your program so you can actually have a, a, wide, a wide footprint of if you need to put ALPR technology through us. Um, and the video monitoring surveillance is all in one camera. So your video monitoring surveillance system and your ALPR are all under one, one device. You don't have multiple devices covering each one. Any questions or anything else that I can answer? You know, I really appreciate the time for us to come by and speak with you. Um, I know there's a lot of other vendors and companies out there that do this, so you know, RP process, I'm not sure if that's something that the county goes through on a, on a regular basis, but I would recommend looking at everybody, not just one, uh, just because there are, or there are pros and cons to everybody's programs, not just ours, but all, all of the, uh, the vendors that are associated with, with this industry. Like most people that walk through the door, hopefully you're, you're self 
motivated, right? You oh, of course. I just, I'm, 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 I'm just, just letting you know that, you know, <laughs> my experience. We went through 20 minutes. Hopefully, you ain't pitching everybody else. All right, guys. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, again, we'll, we'll be sensitive again. Um, transition, we've got a couple of guests here. Chief Connor, obviously, your, your, your voice matters in this particular situation, so I appreciate the sheriff and you guys uh, being able to come out. So I'll let you lead uh, and however you want to respond. <clears throat> I had a couple questions. Uh, yes, you, you talked about the uh, the speed limit starts doing it at 11 miles per hour. Yes, Generally, our officers give 15 before they start writing citations. Is that something that can be tweaked? Oh, of course. Our, our, our systems are completely customizable as far as the enforcement speed goes. That 11 or over is what was written in the state law to a, that says that's when you can start actually enforcing the system. So if you wanted to increase that threshold to 15, um, that's something that would be up to the jurisdiction on how they wanted to handle that. But it can be done. Okay. And you, you could put it into your county ordinance, so that way it, the, the whole public will be aware of it as well. What the speed limit is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just generally speaking, when we write mm -hmm. citation, we give a little bit of a leeway. Um, you, you mentioned the set times, and you, you're, you're proposing a year-round type um, enforcement at certain hours. Um, Y'all had any kickback that school's not in? We have it, and, and, so and our experience with that came from uh, the state of Maryland. You know, when Georgia issued this law, it almost is identical to what Maryland had issued several years ago. And the one thing that they that they had said was, and this is not in the Georgia law. This is just our our recommendation is making it a set time so that way there is no confusion on whether do I know the camera's running, do I not know the camera's running. I know that it's running from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's it, and so you don't have to do it that way. Um, this can be programmed in any sense that you could have it enforced from seven to four, only on days when school's in session, so summer and holidays is off. It just depends on how you guys wanna run. Right. But again, just from a standpoint of an ease of a program in our experience, having it set and having that time never change, it decreases the amount of citizens that are, gonna, that are either gonna request court or that are gonna call to complain or ask questions about how the program is run because you have it out there in your ordinance or on you know your website, whatever it is, here's where our program is run. It is seven to four, Monday through Friday, no matter what, and that's, that's how things are. Because there is summer school, there is winter programs. We know that there are schools in every county that, that do things outside of other times where other schools may not, and rather than having it by either jurisdiction or by <coughs> school zone or school area, uh, it kind of helps to make it uniform across the board. Just a recommendation. Right. And I understand simplicity for the citizens would yes. be most reasonable. Uh, you mentioned four million citations in the one percent bill court. That's twenty thousand cases. What time period are you talking about that y'all generated four million citations? Since, since the start of our oh, so two thousand five, two thousand six. Okay. Since then, we we that's how many we've issued sent uh, for the life of our company that we've gone through. And we handle um, part of our training and our onboarding is working with local courts to set up a program designee working with our court uh, request personnel to develop any type of forms that need to be mailed out. So we handle all those requests on behalf of the jurisdiction. So when a citizen does request court, it comes to us and then we work with that local court system to mail out the court request notices. So once that court data is set, we mail those to the citizens that requested it and then set up a digital docket that gets sent back to law enforcement where it's all digital based. So the photographs, the original citation, there's no paper that needs to be transferred or brought in from a, a law enforcement standpoint. We give you guys a tablet, you bring that in, you can pull up all your calibration records, uh, the original photographs, um, a preset testimony if you would like, they can all be done at the hand of a tablet where you're not using any type of court paper. Okay. So, in the event that somebody don't pay it, you're saying that you're suspending the registration? The state allows it, doesn't say you have to. Okay. But the state does allow it. Okay. Say that, say that wasn't an option. That's not something the county chose to do. Uh, I mean, this is something that's been sent to, to collections. Is that what y'all do? And it can be. It, 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 so it's a civil fine, so it can be sent to a collections agency. Um, after that fourth notice, if there is no vehicle registration hold, we can send it off to a collection agency on behalf of the jurisdiction. And then, if you already have one in place, and then that, then that collection agency will collect on that civil fine since it is. It is, it is legal to do that. Now, not every jurisdiction wants to go through a collections process and have that be, I quote unquote, teeth in their program. Um, there's probably only out of the 20 clients plus that we have, there's probably only three that do collections, three or four, just because they're in an area where they have a lot of out of state. 
and they they're on a border state or and they they don't want or can't flag guys they tags. So they use collections to kind of help pull that revenue back in that is being just sitting out there that no one can collect on. And I can imagine that you could probably set it up so that there's a court date set when you send out the notification and that they would um, if they don't pay it by that time period then it would be it would be mandatory for them to be in court. Uh, as far as mandatory court, I'm not that would be something we'd have to work with you guys or if that's how you want to run your program. Right now the way that the state law says is Unless they request the court through the, the citation process in the back, there's a little block, a little section they fill out. Unless they request court that way, there's no court date that is set until that court request is sent in. Right. But if you wanted to have something where you could do that, but you know, on that third or fourth notice, and if you don't pay the citation by X date, then you're going to be subject to collections and or registration holds, is usually how that last part of that, that collection notice goes. And there's no mandatory verbiage for those, what these notices need to say. So we would customize that work with you, figure out how you want to how you want to customize these notices to be mailed out and what kind of message you want to be sent to the, the citizens that get a violation. And so you're you're going after the restaurant owner. Yes, the registered owner, not the driver. So it's it's a civil fine, so that's how you're citing the vehicle, not the driver of the vehicle. And you can do transfer liability on the back as well. If, if the citizen says I wasn't the driver, they can transfer liability to whoever was driving by sending in certified letters, and then we transfer that citation over to who was driving the vehicle and that's the person now that's responsible for the citation and or going to court. So there is a process where the owner of the vehicle can transfer that liability over to the driver only if they choose to. Um, but it's on behalf of that registered owner to be able to do that, uh, to be able to find that information out and provide it to us or any other. And which ALPR company do you work with, Vigilant or LSA? Uh, neither. We've developed our own in-house system. Uh, it's, uh, it's all based on video based. It doesn't use L uh, LSAG or Vigilant. Okay, so it's not, it's, you're capturing the tag, you're not really oh, no, we're, saving them. We're right? saving, no, we're, so we're, you have a database. Mm -hmm. we're, we're running it full in that we can access NCIC, mm -hmm. uh, access to your hot list, all your, everything, we can do it all. Y'all also run commercial uh, portion of this like Vigilant does, where you've got the law enforcement that captures it, and you've got some well, type of, of uh, record service uh, or we, we repo don't, men or anything? Our, like our AOPR side of our company is, is fairly new, um, but we do offer it as part of our, our program, especially here in Georgia. Some states are requiring only certain companies that can run uh, certain AOPR companies. Uh, and for example, uh, in Maryland, LSAG has a state contract. You can't run any other, or you can, but you just don't have access to NCIC or the hot list if you don't run who the state of Maryland requires you to use. So here in Georgia, there's no requirement. You can use any ALPR company that you that you choose as long as you have the setup to be able to push that data into that database. So we, we would do that on, on, on our end. So are you saying it's that we would have to use your company no. or we could use LSAG? I'm, I'm just saying this is an option that we offer up as part of our program. So if you already have ALPR technology or you're already looking at a certain company, you don't have to come to us. We just are offering it up as, a, as an extra service. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Can we have your service with the, with the um, with the rec LIDAR, yes. but have we choose to go as yes. a separate company mm -hmm. on your pole, mm -hmm. and, and well, I guess it'd be a state pole with that. I, I, I've, I've worked with LSAG, uh, their, their Northeast guy, um, on putting their systems on our Maryland clients where our systems are put up, so they're plugging into our power source, and they're installing their ALPR cameras on our poles or our trailers, and they're running their systems off of our systems as a joint the joint venture for our clients in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So no, it's just an optional service. You're not, you're not, you, you already have something in place or you're already looking at a certain company. You can feel free to work with those as well. You don't have to go with us. See, this was to serve as just sort of an introduction. Is there anything else? No. Um, is this sufficient for you to sort of? Yes, sir, that's, that's good. I think yeah. I have a good understanding. Yeah. Anybody from the school board here or no? I am. Okay. And who are you? Uh, E.W. Tobin, Director of Transportation. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me. Yes, if you would come down here, the, these meetings are being filmed and okay. it's pretty much the cut off. So if you'll come over here beside Mr. Watson, please. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Please weigh in. A couple of questions just for you guys. Um, so the location, uh, you say you've done this with 20 other. Um, 20 other districts or? Well, I mean, well, I mean 20 plus clients across our company 
standpoint, but uh, here in Georgia alone, we have, we have two active contracts right now. So how does the schools, um, how do you use it in this situation? Are we putting them on the campuses or near the campuses? Or it, we, we found it's up to how the jurisdiction works with the school and where the system would be best placed. Um, obviously, directly in front of the school as close as possible is your, your best location to put a system because that's where the students are either crossing or you, know, you have most of your traffic in and out of the school. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not you place it on campus uh, property or not, that's entirely up to how those jurisdictions want to run. We have some that are outside of it. We have some that are right in front of the school. Mm -hmm. um, but it'd be on the right away. It would be on the right away. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and then as far as anything else with the school, you know, the permit that we that is required has to be signed by the school superintendent for that particular district or county. So we'll just be working with whoever from the school board to be able to get that permit signed. Uh, that uh, saying they they agree to putting up a system within their within their school zone or within that school area. So that's just one requirement that the state state puts on the uh, the permit process. Okay. And now there are companies that that put this technology on the bus. Is that something that you guys offer? We, we do not do the school bus stop arm enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are several out there that do it. Um, one in particular that has several contracts here in Georgia, but no, we, we, have, we don't do any of the stop arm enforcement stuff. Our company uh, solely is based on the red light. Now, we have some other ventures and parking and some other things, but speed enforcement in school zone is where we started, and that's why that's where, that's where our expertise falls in there. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, well, again, this was supposed to be an introduction. I appreciate you guys coming out. Murphy, thank you so much for setting this up. I mean, my, my initial question, my, my initial thought was more of a, to, to pull somebody's register, it seemed, it, it seemed punitive. It, it just seems like, oh, that's a lot of power. Pull the registration. So I guess chief, and this is more for y'all, you know, for us to pass local legislation to sort of support this. What do y'all think, is that too much? Or is it, it it's just, to, well, to block to put a, you know almost like putting a lane. I'm a layman. I don't I don't do what you guys do, but it's just like I'm, I'm always citizen focused, right? Mm -hmm. So I see the enablement of what the state has done. And again, it's this. not a requirement. It's just an option that the state offers to put some teeth and you know some some enforcement power in the jurisdictions that want that want it. Not that it's not required that they do any type of registration holds. I get it's revenue generated, but at, at what cost, right? It's always a balancing act. So, Chief, what do you, is that too much, too little? Is that something y'all would entertain? I mean, I, I'm open. I don't have a position. This is y'all world. Uh, I mean, you've got to have some type of enforcement, um, and that there's probably several options you could use. Um, one, using the power of the court, uh, versus, but they're more toward an automated system where it's, um, less manpower and it's all automated and it runs and right. you have less hands in it. <clears throat> so that's their bite. To, to, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I will say something. Yeah, please, please. please. Chief Deputy. Yeah, well, I, I do understand that in some cases jurisdictions have opted to do maybe a month or so of, of warning tickets in the jurisdiction so people who are driving through the school zones get some expectation of maybe they don't get an actual ticket for that, that grace period in between but saying, hey, you get something in the mail that says, hey, you were speeding during this time of day. This is your kind of warning to show that in the future that on such and such a date, this program is going to start. I think that's something the should also have. That way, at least it gets the people in the surrounding area who are driving through there regularly that might not be realizing where they're heading, uh, some kind of grace period to, yeah. to warm yeah. up the system, which could help your constituency better manage. And it's actually written, I'm pretty sure it's actually written in the okay. state yeah, it's ready to, stay to do a, you know, a 30 day grace yeah. period. And that way, I mean, it just depends on what uh, the jurisdiction would like to do. We can mail out warning tickets and say, you know, at starting date, this is when the actual uh, citations will be issued. So that way, there's, from a public yeah. standpoint, there's I don't, I don't think he's thinking on the onset okay. um, because we can do enough public mm -hmm. announcements mm -hmm. to let people know they're in, in effect. But I think he's looking at long term. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and, and there is a need. There, there is a lot of uh, traffic enforcement that can be done in the school zones that we just, quite frankly, don't have the manpower to do. Mm -hmm. So there's a need for it. Um, but like you said, at what cost to the citizens? So, so we're gonna, we'll let y'all work this out. We've got to keep our committee going. So yes, uh, y'all can connect with these two um, key points of contact um, for follow-up. And uh, Murphy, I'll double back. Yes, sir. Thank Chief, you.
Thank you, gentlemen. Miguel, we got to keep moving, so we can visit. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. All right. Okay, the next item yeah, on the right agenda right. is uh, tra uh, transit services updates uh, from the elaborate Yep, we'll transition real quick. We have Michael Hightower and Danielle Cherry Hoover from the Calabria Firm here with uh, the presentation. Good afternoon, yep. everyone. Thanks off your time. You're good. That's a transition. Is it okay that I... You can go right in. Just follow it. You're fine. Get around. There are, I do want to give you a heads up, there are three videos that I want to show. So I'll, I'll just preface with that um, and, and move through um, with brevity with some of the other high level points. Real quick, um, yes, let the committee um, acknowledge that um, our chair, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, also member of this committee, is being seen. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Thank you yes. so much. Okay, let's start with what's still ongoing in the marketplace. Using Connect Douglas for your holiday shopping needs. So there are several things with that theme in the marketplace. Chapel Hill News and Views, uh, full page ad, that is consistent. Uh, again, running through January 2020, as well as Hometown Advantage. That is a half page ad as consistent going through January 2020 as well. Here are some examples of what the, uh, those ads are. So obviously a holiday theme, uh, still branding, uh, Connect Douglas appropriately. To piggyback off of that same theme, using Connect Douglas for your holiday shopping. Mall coverage. So this week, in our place mall in the food court area, it are those table tents that we talked about last month. Mm -hmm. So those were designed um, and putting, uh, those will be up on the, the food court area starting this week. Mm -hmm. So this is a sample of what that is. So not only are those uh, folks in the marketplace going to see the same theme within advertisements, but also physically as they move uh, in and around our place mall, which is going to be high foot traffic for obvious reasons. One other ongoing activity is digital. So social media, Facebook, Instagram, and even with uh, working with uh, Rick Martin and his crew uh, with Douglasville happening. So these are some samples of posts uh, that correspond to not only activities that have been happening, but also engagement or, for example, Veterans Day, representing a holiday. And this picture um, I took for the September Saturdays. So it was an appropriate thing. So we, we, we utilize as much as we can and have interaction of um, different activities. So what's going to be continuing through social media? Again, Douglasville, uh, excuse me, using Connect Douglas for your holiday shopping needs. So holiday schedule updates um, uh, when appropriate. Any other targeted uh, updates for routes when appropriate to the holiday. And then any bus signage or uh, either, when I say changes, um, if uh, another route, or excuse me, if a, a stop needs to be added or changed to the holiday. So all of this is contingent upon what the needs are and obviously with uh, approval and, and dictation from Gary um, and his staff. 
another ongoing activity, literature drops. Thankfully, people are utilizing these schedules. So we replenish where they need um, and adding uh, more emphasis on Strayer University. So one thing that we're doing now is touching, especially the university colleges and schools. Um, we touched them early on, but not allowing uh, that opportunity to fall in deaf ears. So they were kind of going through it with the schedules people are utilizing. So that's a location that we needed to uh, drop off more. So uh, literature jobs are not putting in everywhere, but targeted locations. But that was an added one that was needed. Engagement. As I mentioned before, those posts that were on social media, we were here at the courthouse for the trick or treat. Uh, if you all saw, um, we're here, there were some interesting costumes. <laughs> uh, but that was, that was a smile day for me. Uh, that was a good day because it was a lot of foot traffic. We had a wonderful um, location downstairs. And it was nice to just interact with moms, families, um, not only utilizing it, but maybe needing more information. And getting out candy, making children smile. So that was a good day. Uh, November, November 4th, obviously the groundbreaking. Uh, that ceremony, I think, was a, a, a wonderful event. We highlighted it on social, and this is one of the videos that I'll click on in one moment. Um, but I also want to touch on the enhanced business opportunities, especially down that Thornton Road corridor. Um, Commissioner Robinson, you, you touched on that we don't want to, to lose sight of that opportunity. So with that being said, working with Douglas County Workforce Development. Um, had a couple different meetings between last time we all were together and uh, to date with Ruzi Stratton and, uh, and her staff. We've actually given a survey to over 50 plus HR reps and tomorrow was the return deadline. So the, the reason for the survey is to not only see what the need is with their current employees, but how uh, best we can utilize the opportunity to get in front of associates and staff and help them utilize Connect Up us. Um, so with uh, the, re we again, ask them to give the uh, return survey back on November 20th, and then we'll go with next steps. So we can uh, have data to analyze, and then follow uh, with Brady and her staff to even have um, an internal brainstorming session of how we connect uh, with Connect Douglas can utilize the HR reps now that we have some data. November 8th, uh, we went to the Thorn Road Walmart. I'm very versed with store numbers now. So Thorn Road Walmart is store number 3205. Actually went back um, and sat in on one of the meetings. They were very hospitable. Um, I was there for maybe two hours. Uh, not only did we give a uh, speak for all staff meeting, it was about 50 to 75 people within the all staff meeting coming in at various times. The majority was there, it was about 45 at one given time. And uh, gave out information, collected information. People were even interested of, um, of driving opportunities, employment opportunities. So people from this store knew about Connect Douglas. And the one thing that came up was office, or excuse me, operating hours on a Sunday which we know, but hearing people utilize that, utilize the service firsthand, um, even one gentleman uh, took it from cop. So he knew the routes on uh, like the back of his hand. He even said, hey, that he's the one that gave me the suggestion. Uh, could you let me know about Saturday hours? I can, um, that's the only time, or excuse me, Sunday hours, that's the only time I can't get to work, but I can get home from work. So thank you for your feedback, because we're, we can meet, when you see a need, we meet with Connect Douglas. So having that data is, is an amazing opportunity. So we're gonna click on this link just to, to circle back with the groundbreaking ceremony. If you can bear with me, so I'm gonna pull this link. Is there some, something I've been, you know, that I'm aware of? So it's a hyperlink, so. Let's see. You can try using the maps. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
done hyperlink on PDF? Uh, it's a, a book in the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is go through this and then I'll bring up the videos at the end if you don't mind. In the essence of time, if that's yeah, okay. Keep going. <laughs> so these are some uh, photos from the ongoing engagement. This lady here, she actually utilizes uh, the Mike Douglas and then Gary uh, allowed us to have a couple of passes to hand out. So she said she could utilize it that week, not only to get back and forth to school, excuse me, back and forth to work, but her back and forth to her daughter's um, home. These, <laughs> this was funny to me because these were uh, from Trick or Treat. Those are dinosaurs. Yeah, and they came to the courthouse. Yeah, the courthouse Trick or Treat. Yeah. There was a couple of dinosaurs. Those are funny. Those are good ones. Um, but again, great visibility, and um, that was a good day. And then obviously the uh, November 4th round breaking. All right, so let me try the videos one more time. Um, one thing I at least wanted to make known for this room, uh, Rick Martin and TJ, his staff was been, and has been amazing, so I at least wanted to let the room know we work very well together to not only accomplish the 30 second video, but as well as the, what we called the long version last time, but the how-to video. The 30 second video is going to um, actually be be um, within Comcast. So Gary actually did an amazing job working with Comcast and those, um, the video will be scheduled throughout, um, is it until January? Remember, so, it's, so um, it's already running. It's our, so so that's now, when I woke January. up at three o'clock in the morning on the side of the bed, like, man, that was, yeah. and it was, yeah. That's so very good, yeah, so very good. There's a how-to video, and then the thirty-second video. Can I exit out of here, please? Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. So the first video is from the WSB
40 person uh, lecture hall, conference room, mm -hmm. administrative spaces, and a driving simulator with a band of bus operators trained virtually behind the wheel. New facility paid for with a mix of federal and county dollars to help keep Douglas tied in and connected to the rest of the metro. We're trying to align everything regarding transportation. It's not just um, mobility alone. Um, we have some roads, we have some infrastructure that we've done. It's a lot of that we had for the right out here. The expansion should open sometime next spring. Was that true what I said, guys? You can't deny it. It's all Yes, yes, very good. Very good video. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Anything then else? Look, the house. One other. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to share with you more, too. Yeah. These sound good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Look pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah, look good, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man, thank you, guys. It's going to sound good. So the next video is, this is a 30 second ad. At Connect Douglas, our job is to connect places and events that are important to you. Need to make a doctor's appointment near Wellstar Douglas? We can get you there. Shop at Arbor Place Mall. Eat at one of the great restaurants. We can get you there and to dozens of locations important to you in Douglas County. Fare is only $2.50. It's $1 for seniors, students, and individuals with disabilities. For more information, call 770-949-7665 or visit connectdouglas.com. That's what's on the That's on now. Mm -hmm. Right, that's right. Good. Very good. All right. You got one more? One more. All right. Is this the how to? This is the how to, yes, sir. All right, no chair. No chair. Okay, now we're showing that how to. Speaking of, <laughs> Don't forget Mr. Rick Martin, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to call your name. Connect Douglas, our goal is to connect you to the people, places, and events that are important to you. We offer a fixed route bus service that is convenient, economical, and easy to use. Let's take a ride on one of our buses. First, look at one of our schedules. We have dedicated fixed routes, and each has its own schedule. See which route best serves location where you want to go. The schedule shows where you can board the bus and the time when it will pick you up. All of the bus routes connect. For example, if you're riding on a Route 10 bus, you can transfer to the Route 20 bus at no charge. You can even transfer from the Route 40 bus to Cobley Route 30 at no charge. This transfer is located on South Service Road near the Riverside Epicenter and Six Flags. This transfer gives you access to MARTA at the HE Home Station, which opens the entire Metro Atlanta area to you. By looking at the schedule, you determine where you need to board the bus. All bus stops have Connect Douglas branded signs. We have almost 100 stops along the four fixed bus routes. We ask that you be at the stop five, ten minutes before the bus is expected to arrive. You can also access and track all Connect Douglas buses by using your smartphone. Download the Passio Go mobile app from the Apple App Store or Google Play and choose Connect Douglas at the select agency prompt. This app tells you how close the bus is to where you want to board. When the bus arrives at your pickup location, be sure to have the correct fare for boarding the bus. The standard one-way fare is only $2.50 or $1 for senior citizens, students, and individuals with disabilities. Remember, the driver does not carry money, so it is important that you have the correct fare. For your convenience, we offer multi-trip passes. Passes can be purchased at the Douglas County Transportation Center at 8800 Doris Road in Douglasville. Passes are available for 10 trips or unlimited trips during a 31-day period. No need to pay when boarding with these passes. As you board the bus, put your money in the fare box or show the driver your multi-trip pass. Find a seat and relax. All of our buses have free Wi-Fi. And at Douglas Drivers announce each stop. Be alert when approaching the location where you want to get off the bus. If you need to get off at a location that is not a designated stop, no problem. Just pull the alert cord above the seats and the driver will pull over at the safest location for you. Watch your step as you get off the bus. If you plan to use Connect Douglas to return to your original boarding location or a different location, check the schedule again for the time you need to board. We want you to enjoy your ride with Connect Douglas, but there are a few rules we ask you to follow. Be courteous to your driver and fellow passengers. No food or drinks on the buses. No guns or weapons. Registered service dogs are allowed. Other pets are allowed only if they are craved. Connect Douglas has a friendly staff that is always ready to help you. 
For more information, please call 770-949-7665 or visit connectdouglas.com. Visit us on Facebook and Instagram using at Connect Douglas. Thank you for using Connect Douglas. We hope you enjoy the ride. How long is that video? Three minutes? Three minutes? Just no. shy. I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Three minute video, good. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. any thoughts? Impressive. Mm -hmm. And it certainly um, definitely is user friendly. Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. the instructions are pretty self explanatory. So, thank you. Have you received any feedback since you launched that? This is this this one has not gone live. Yes, yes. You got not gone live. Yes, okay. yes. No, we were yeah. we were waiting for the committee and then. For direction on whether or not we need to present it to the full, full board. So we're we're asking for your direction. Correct. Um, the other two videos you've already put out there, right? They're okay. live. Yes, sir. Okay. We can do it in the committee. I don't know why I hold back. I mean, yeah. the, the parking plan has been uh, adopted for the most part. Mm -hmm. But Madam Chair, this I means so. Think from a senior perspective, mm -hmm. and, and maybe our youth. Do you think that it fits the right field, right? Take your time, yeah, it's like yeah, explanation. Mm -hmm. you know, you really, um, you hit upon the uh, connectivity. I thought that was great that you touched upon the connectivity and how important it is. You don't have to pay in between the mm -hmm. stops. That's very important because most people probably think you do. And then also you have a demonstration of how to read the sketch. Yes. That's important. That was one of the things that I had to And we're, we're actually going to, to follow this up with a, a more detailed description mm -hmm. on how to read and utilize the sketch. Mm -hmm. We may not do a video on that uh, immediately, but we do have some user releases mm -hmm. ready to go on, on how to physically read the sketch. Mm -hmm. but, but you did mention like, like, like we got a senior center. Do you go over there to a senior center and you sit down and walk in through a similar mm -hmm. thing but what is? Do you go over to Strayer or over to yes. Georgia Highland and say get out in the community center and run the same thing? I mean, just one of those touch points. I'm not scripting what you should, you might have already thought about this, you, but. It, it actually, uh, in the, the most recent edition of the Sentinel, there was a large article about the train, travel training classes okay. that we offer, okay. the bus tours that we offer. And in those, we do exactly what you're talking about. Very good. So one thing, excuse the interruption, is what I call leading in the box. That is not only a tool for digital, but that's within the arsenal to go to these other locations with engagement. And then um, when ready, for example, Shared University is having an upcoming mm -hmm. event, having that to show you, mm -hmm. um, as well as having training or opportunities to arrive at their decision. And, and, and I do want to echo, echo what Danielle said about Rick Martin and his staff, TJ in particular. They mm -hmm. they have been so fantastic yeah, to work with. Rick, Rick's in here? He's in here. Rick. Rick. in the back. Okay. <laughs> But, but, but to that point, Madam Chair, and again, with, with, without taking away, I, I'd like to go ahead and just make a motion to um, make a recommendation. Let the full board do see this before we launch it. So they don't like, you know, I think it's something uh, respectful to a lot of them to sort of see this for the first time before it hits the street. A lot of effort and work went into this. I mean, that was very thoughtful. Their feedback went into what was necessary for this. So if you don't mind, Madam Chair, oh, maybe at our next meeting, y'all can just make the, run the same video three minutes for whomever y'all want to have sure. there. Mm -hmm. it's, yes, sure. It's, Absolutely. Okay. When you say next meeting, meeting on 12, okay. no, no, three. Three. Not the work session, not the, the work session, mm -hmm. or the grand jury? 12, right. Mm -hmm. Answer next meeting. 12, December. Okay. Does it make it you? Okay, the, the work session, is that where you want it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, December 3rd. Okay. December 2nd. 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 Yeah, this work session. Okay. December 2nd. Okay. Um, just let them see the video be, be part of the, I mean, that, that was a very good video. I was impressed at like, okay, they pulled that off. Mm -hmm. That was good. I mean, you hit all the different elements. It was like, okay, y'all pulled it up. Y'all did a skill. I mean, that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, I, I say it because, like, how are you going to do this? And, and, and it was, I mean, I just didn't know what to expect. But I, I like that. That's why I don't want to let it get lost. Mm -hmm. um, let, let it get, so. Miguel, are you okay? Yes, sir. Gary? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. All right, so um, Ms. Like, I'm going to add one final yeah. thing, Mr. Chairman. We had a meeting about the many of you guys have attended uh, the South Metro Outlook Conference before, mm -hmm. uh, here we go. and we had a meeting this morning about it. And, and Daniel, uh, with our one of the things that I brought up, I was going to ask you guys. I think this would be a good piece to feature at this year's conference. Um, uh, as we talk about the bigger counties, this is an example for 
the, the, the those other Rockdale, Henry, Douglas. So if you guys don't mind, we're gonna add this as part of our presentation this year. It'll be February the 20th, and this is a good example of how not all big is all. There are other things other than the big locations that make life important. Yes. Uh, and this is a classic example. Mm -hmm. Y'all have led the region in this kind of circuit. This is the first transportation program in 15 years, so. This is something, though, to that point, and I appreciate it, Mark, but this is something, this would be live, right, so anybody could use this link, but he just wants mm -hmm. to feature, right? Do we have to go through anything special? Mm -hmm. because no, it's, not to, it's not to February. No, no, I, yeah. no, I think we're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's public, it's, it's good for public us. domain. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I just want to make sure we're acknowledging. So, mm -hmm. the, um, committee, I'd like to make a motion to um, uh, administrative concurrence to pass this on to the full board of commissioners for a presentation at our December 3rd meeting, 2019. So moved. Second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Second to that, we'll go ahead um, and we give um, administrative concurrence to release our video for the February 3rd um, South Metro. February 20th. 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 Mm -hmm. South Metro. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we give it a record. All in favor of that, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Not to rush you. So we, 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 have, we have to wait. Thank you, Dr. Madam Chair, Mark, Dr. Gary. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, let's just, I just got to keep going. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right. All right, next yep. item on yep. the agenda is a uh, change order request related to uh, the uh, Transportation Center addition. The a change order already? Well, I don't, I don't know if you, if you call it a change order, but what has happened is that the architectural and oversight fees uh, from our architect uh, for the Transportation Center addition have come in higher than we uh, originally estimated for this project way back at the beginning. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, uh, as you recall, we had to rebuild the project. And number two, in order to get the, the project down under budget, we had to do a considerable amount of value engineering, which resulted in uh, some considerable changes to the, the drawings, the, the plans. So what that means is that our architect has, has estimated to us that their fees to complete the remainder of the project over the next eight months is, is about uh, $22,000. Now, the, the good news about that is that I have that money in my budget. And another good news about it is that that's 80% reimbursable through one of our grants. So there's, there's no budget uh, impact uh, to the county for this. And, and my request is that uh, uh, we be allowed to issue a purchase order to Carter Watkins for this $22,400 and something. But what, which project is this? This is the Transportation Center edition. Yeah, okay, so this is this is what we talked about. Here. This is when you, your value engineering, you reshuffle the deck, the guys come back and we've got task force behind us. So the savings that we thought we got, it, it just, come on. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm stuck. We just awarded this contract. They, they well, this isn't the construction now. This is this is a design which was a long time ago. I understand. But we're we're into construction. It's after the fact. So I'm gonna go backwards to acknowledge something that when work is done, well, why, why didn't you resubmit that doing before we got into construction? Since it was based on your design, you're coming after the fact. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't support this. I think this is full cool board. There's no way. Well, I, is that me? I have to go full board. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, right. that's basically what we're asking. Yeah. Thank you. So my question is, the construction administration, do, do they already have construction administration fees in their contract? Well, or is this their construction administration? This is this is their construction administration. Because I think development service could be James and Travis, either one of them can do this. Okay. Which is what we've always done. It's always been somebody in the house. Yeah, because when I was down there, I used to be the guy in help. So, and, uh, Gary, we can there, save us fifteen thousand dollars. Then we're only talking six thousand seven hundred. Are there submittals that need to be reviewed by? They they review the pay the pay request. But how about they, technical submittals for 
they, items, yes. gadgets, materials. They, they would review those. To, to that, I didn't that include in their design fee? Well, that's, that's a question. If it was part of the scope originally or not, because that's something we need. Yeah, for them to be able to but there, which architects there, normally do that anyway. Yeah, their their, their original fees were based uh, on an estimate construction estimate of a million dollars, and we're at one point three six, I think it is. Now that's that's why these additional fees are coming into play. But did they redesign something, or are they just me? I hear you, a million dollars. But did they redesign something? You value engineer to make the construction fit the million dollars. So we, you fit the original design at a million. But it, 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 it didn't, we couldn't fit it into a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So is it basically even, even, with, even, with the, even with the value engineering, what we came up with was with the 1.36 okay. million. Get I, I, I get it. What, what entitles them to the increase? What additional value do they get for the increase, which was really what construction costs or materials that are outside of their scope? It's not necessarily their design. I'm, I'm just like, the question is, why should we do it? Not could we do it? I won't belabor this. I say, so I agree right. we owe them more money for, they've been, they've been project out twice. They pretty much bid it out twice, uh -huh. um, but I'd have to look at the you bid construction documents. Remember, we went out to bid the first time, scratched all that, yes. rebid it, rebid it second time. So did um, they do it or we did it? Well, we did it, but they were involved in deep changing the plans to get it under budget. Right. That's what we did. But that's why I asked pretty you: did they, did they do any work? Can we prove that they did work? I, mean, I said they did work. I, I just, it's one of those where you would think that this would have been part of the process by the time we got to construction. You're after the fact, we're already into construction. Why didn't they bring this up before then? Why didn't they bring this up during the process that, okay, they're reshuffling the deck, they're reshuffling the deck. Why wasn't any of this being said during that process? This is like after the fact. Oh, by the way, you, that's all I'm saying. So then it becomes, okay, what entitles you to this additional spread? I mean, if they can defend it, that's fine. But right now, just hearing you, I'd like to see, the full board needs to see the documentation that supports this. Not just I ask across the table that we need to pay these guys $22,000. Let's prove it to the full board of commissioners that there's something that exists that they're entitled to this. So I say take it to the full board. So um, there's no reason to vote. I just say administrative concurrence. We go, take it to the full board. That's what we intended on doing in Okay. Okay. Okay, so Mark. We'll make sure we've done yeah, it. I want to see. I want to email Bill and get a copy of their. Right. That's the goal right now. Co copy of their contract because if these construction administration are separate from what they would normally do as far as day to day activities, we don't need them to oversee the project. Again, um, keep going with the meeting. Uh, we can take that, follow back up on that. You've got permission to just take it to the full board and we keep going. Here you go. Next yeah. item. Let's go. All right. Next item is uh, also from uh, Transit Services. Uh, operating procedure and policies uh, policies for Connect Douglas. Um, uh, request for approval. Uh, Gary, you got a hand yes, sir. Uh, it's in the package that I distributed earlier. Yep. Uh, as we've moved along with our fixed route and paratransit service, we have developed a comprehensive package of uh, standard operating policies and procedures. This is the full package here. It's, it's close to 100 pages, okay. which I did not distribute to the committee. What I did distribute to you is a, a table of contents and also a letter uh, from the county legal staff saying that they have, have looked through it and basically give their blessing uh, to the, the policies and procedures. Okay. The, the one thing that is significant that I think the board does need to know about is that in those policies and procedures, um, we um, are creating a uh, ADA 
advisory board. Okay. The uh, federal regulations require us to have a mechanism in place to where uh, members of the disabled uh, community um, and the community as a whole can have input uh, into the, our paratransit services. Okay. And so what we've done is we pattern a an advisory board that would be somewhat similar to the Animal Control Advisory Board to where this committee would meet on a regular basis and, and offer non-binding recommendations about our service. Non-binding. Okay. Non-binding. So right. right. okay. And uh, the composition of the board would include uh, our transit services coordinator, who at the moment is, is Jamal Shepard, yep. um, one member of the Board of Commissioners, uh, the Connect Douglas Federal Transit Administration Compliance Officer, the third party operators on site manager or their designee, and three advocates of, for the disabled community. And we would select those advocates of the disabled community, community basically through the same process that the county uses already for its, its various boards, where we would advertise um, for uh, applicants throughout the community. Uh, we would collect those names and present them to the Board of Commissioners who in turn would, would choose the representatives. Okay. Madam Chair, any thoughts on that, committee-wise? Okay, yeah. Are you going to serve on the uh, one, here, one, one of my peers wants to step in front of me, no problem, but yeah, I, I have no problem here. But, but yeah. what, what, again, what we're asking for this is to take it before the full Board of Commissioners mm -hmm. for their, their approval at the first December meeting. That'll be fine. Yeah, and then once it becomes a board, then Lisa will be responsible for doing all the advertising and all that right. stuff like she does. Right. With the other ones. Because it is a formal structure board, I think it's something that we can just acknowledge here. It's a full board let go. We're going through that right now. Yes. I yeah. know you have three advocates for the disabled community. Have you thought about a full since we have four districts? Or uh, I haven't thought about that. But if we had four, that would make an equal, num uh, equal number of members on the committee. Oh, so we'll make it five, and then each one of us, including you. We can choose some of you. Can you email that entire document to Jessica so she can put it yeah. with the minutes? Yeah. With the revised and sure. comments, and then take it to the full board on December 3rd. Yeah. Uh, Taking the motion for administrative concurrence to send this to the full board for consideration. So mm -hmm. we Mm -hmm. Discussion. The motion second. All agree. Say aye. So, Madam Chair, do you do you want us to uh, make this uh, five members of the disabled community as opposed to uh, three? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would allow each commissioner each to commissioner choose from the district, and then I'll just as as, as okay. it's large, I'll just find someone. I'll choose. Them. Okay. You okay with that? Yes, sir. Miguel. Keep going. Yes, sir. Uh, next item on the agenda is a review of the signage for the Connect Douglas bus stops. Okay. And in your package, you have uh, two two proposals, two options yep. that we're considering. And one of the committee's input on those. Mm -hmm. this, uh, these two particular signs, they're the same width as what we have now, 15 inches, but they're two inches taller okay. than what we have now. Two inches, which is what, this? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mark, I can't distinguish two inches, so in your mind. And that same size was stop sign? I mean, a speed limit sign? A regulation speed limit sign? Uh, now no. they're taller. Oh, they are taller? Yeah. So they're big. They're big. Yeah, so essentially the size of the speed limit. So mm -hmm. All right. And we tried to, to, to make more contrast and make them a little uh, more colorful and darker to where they would show up. So they, they were slim and slender before. It was like they were cute, but we need utility, so they're wider now. So it's not just taller two inches. Are they wider? No, they're the same width. But then we were back. Okay. But that was sort of the issue. You get everything like, okay. We got to weigh in on that. The, the, there is a standard um, blank, aluminum blank that's 18 by 24. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, that would be, make it slightly larger, and, and it is something that's readily available in terms of vacuum. So it's the same width, then, is what I'm hearing. So if yes. we were 18 by 24, it would be three inches wider than another. 
three inches taller. The, the wider as the issue again, it was blending into it was too thin. You know, like okay, can I see you standing there? Right. There, there's no no. You need some depth on this, and that that was some of the feedback that you go by really fast. In other words, you, it's, it's a small target, and you you miss this stuff. And, but the, the 18 by 24 it is a standard. It'll allow you to get there. Yeah, it, it would, and it is a standard size that people are used to seeing on the road. Mm -hmm. So. Well, we can we can we can see about making it the 18 but by again, 24. But my question would be, what what about the the, the designs? Are are you okay with the designs? I, I have a. I would I want want to see bus stuff right up the very top. Like and then connect to the route team. Yeah. So take the blue stripe on the left and bring it to the top. Okay, just just block bus just stop and connect that was okay. I think that mm -hmm. would be helpful because people are gonna be looking for where's the bus stop you know, where's the bus stop? Mm -hmm. so there you can go with eighteen by twenty four? Yes. Let them see it. Let it be utility, right? We, we, we're not trying to entertain. It's supposed to be the three reasons you communicate to entertain, to inform, and to persuade. We're trying to inform them of something. So we don't. I just want to be government. Be government. Be government. Because if we miss, if, if, they, if they can't see it and they're complaining, is get is great that it's creative, but it missed the point. That well, where do I get on at? Where's the formality of it? So I think it's almost like the stop sign is a stop sign. It's red, right? The hospital sign is an H. It's blue. It's something that you get used to when you when you're driving. You're, you're taking a driving test. There's certain things about what they call the fundamentals. So there's something about the fundamental of this bus stop. Like I, I don't want to get away. Like let it be what people are used to seeing. And so that, that's my only issue that what I was hearing from the citizens at the different meetings I went to is that we can't, we just can't identify. We're trying to get our minds around something that we're trying to put identification on something that, okay, but what is it? What am I looking for? But if you give them the standard red, blue, amber, the traditional government signs for directionals and information, I think we're safer. I appreciate the creativity, but if it loses the utility, then we just got, what do you say, 100 stop signs that are nice. But they, they're not accomplishing what we need. So I say 18 by 24. That's when we say 18 by 24. Okay, well, that, that's fine. We can, can do that without much difficulty. What I would like to do, though, is, is for the next uh, Transportation Committee meeting, actually bring in a, a couple of prototypes mm -hmm. with that 18 by 24 size to let you see those. If you don't park, I'm going to go on YouTube just look like 18 by 24. Mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure they mm -hmm. Technical, they're, they're okay. You okay? Bring back creative. We're yeah. fine with that. We just wanted to make sure that it accomplished what it needed to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So they know I, mean, I can even do a paper version 18 by 24. Mm -hmm. Pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That'd be that'd be the simplest thing to do. Yeah. Now the goal would be again, we talked about this, that no action will be taken on any uh, anything regarding routes or anything until the first of the year. Correct. This is something that you just a work in progress. So we're just acknowledging right now, no action taken. Just keep going. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Miguel, you okay with that? Yes, sir. Just keep going. Come back to the next meeting with a, a revised version of the 18 by 24 and markups. Sure. Right. Miguel, good. keep going. Yes, sir. Next item on the agenda is a proposal for uh, marketing services in 2020 uh, for uh, transit services as well. Okay, Mr. Hightower, do you, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Very briefly, uh, thank you, uh, Miguel, Mr. Chairman. Um, what, you, what you have in your packets is a, is a uh, document that uh, kind of speaks to the, the 12 months starting in January. And uh, clearly, it's talking about the area and getting the consensus. News this morning. Fred, Linda, Mark, and Brian prepare you for the day ahead with Triple T traffic, live reports, and accurate weather updates to help you plan your day. All right. Good. I think that was my voice. But anyway, <laughs> but I think one of the things that, uh, as you see in the packet, that we are emphasizing is, as Danielle has already talked about, is increased ridership, citizen education on page two, and corporate engagement and ride enhancement. So we have four, four primary bullets for 2020. And uh, on to page three, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
why the uh, ridership, uh, the survey done by Dr. DJ, of course, was very adequate as it looked at a lot of the issues regarding uh, uh, increase in ridership. Uh, page four went on. There are several items to do during make sure that we will continue on. Uh, updates a lot of the collateral material. Uh, one of the things that you guys directed earlier was a quarterly ridership sur uh, survey that Dr. DJ did. We that be a critical part of the check and balance for next year. And so I'm on page four. I think it's pretty pretty clear. Uh, earlier again, I think as Dana mentioned earlier, we also will continue our uh, outreach to the corporate side of, 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 of this process. Lunch and learn, but also uh, uh, more in depth with some of the uh, employer employee uh, surveys and those items. Um, page six talks about some of the right enhancement options that uh, we've we, we been discussing with Gary. Um, page seven uh, this is a critical part of the, some of the system expansion considerations uh, with existing routes as well as uh, uh, trying to combine some, poten some potential routes and also part of it with. The, with uh, Chris Pumphrey's operation and again special holiday hours and, and pages eight through uh, eight through uh, nine kind of uh, dovetail some of the monthly activities and of course um, all of this would be can be amended in the direction of Mr. Watson as he sees fit throughout the year so that's a quick summary uh, additional enhancements but I think uh, I appreciate y'all's consideration. So. Uh, Mr. Watson, Rick Watson, we, we, uh, there was in our prior, I think prior month's meeting, there was a, a, a more formal presentation, marketing plan. Uh, you still acknowledge that plan? Mm -hmm. um, so this is before us to um, consider for passing on to the full board official for recommendation for approval. What is the dollar value of this? What, what, what am I looking at? $100,000. For a for for calendar year 2020. For, for the full calendar year 2020, and what is the funding source? I did I did not include this in, in my budget because I submitted um, a BIR to go in, the, in the, to a different direction. Okay. So uh, right right now there is no funding source for it. Okay. Mark. So what we've been trying to do is finalize the numbers on the CTF, mm -hmm. and that has not been done yet. We're really close. Okay. We need that number. So, so it would either be CTF, or it would have to go to 2020 budget. Are we close? I mean, mm -hmm. no, not what I'm saying. The CTF have an opportunity to. Mm -hmm. and we've been working on. Okay. It's close. Okay. Okay. We're here, we knew we were coming to we get a number. Um, you know, we'll see. Miguel, do you know the number? What's left in our CTF? We had this, we just for you, just disclosure, it was important to make sure we don't have two sets of books. Right? So here we are again here. You have a finance committee and you have a transportation committee. So we're trying to, to avoid uh, situations where we'll beat them, or you, a predecessor where we can't make decisions because you got two sets of books moving. Mm -hmm. right, so we're this is so we're just as in your defense to say, okay guys, what's the number that's remaining? It's a rolling every month. We've hired people to keep up with compliance and different people in y'all guys' area. Like, what's the number? What's left? That's all we're asking. So we can yeah, make a decision. And, and, and to, to your question, Commissioner, uh, we've looked at we've been uh, comparing notes on what the balance ought to be, we still have one outstanding question that once we get the answer to that, we'll know exactly what the number is, but we don't have that just yet. Okay, so what do you think is left? All right, so, all right, go ahead. Based, based on my last review, um, somewhere between 150 and 261. 261. Mm -hmm. okay. So, is the issue that you anticipate that there's something that's going to see that that fits within that number? Is there a conflict of, I mean, obviously there's a lot of need, uh, but is it is a function of priority? We, no. Okay. No, it's, it's a function of one of the elements that shows on, on the list how it was tagged 
and whether it takes care of what we anticipated it was for it or not. Yeah, we're close. Right, well, I, I, I that'll make it complicated. If we're really close. There's two items that have the exact same name, and we've got to figure out which one we've got in here. Okay, so, we, so either we can take it into the budget, mm -hmm. or we can resolve it now and just that if there's a difference just needed, we can sort of just, it's something small, but to not take action, that, I mean, that's what I'm saying. We, I'm trying to avoid it not going to the budget. That's so, worst case scenario, um, Two sixty one minus one twenty five, right, Miguel? Mm -hmm. We have one hundred and thirty six thousand in CTA. Worst case scenario. Okay. So there's enough in CTA. Make a recommendation to submit um, a full a recommendation to the full board of commissioners to approve this contract at one old. 100 even, 100 even um, to be sourced by the Capital Transportation Fund. Can I get a motion? So Second. Second. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Second. Any discussion? I'm sure I'm clear. We okay. got a Capital Transportation Fund existing. Mm -hmm. All right. So this will be a. We'll, we'll take the full board. We'll finish the effectiveness. Mm -hmm. right. So we got a motion, second. All um, in agreement. Say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Here. So when, when does this go before you? 12-3. 12-3. I mean, you can do it 12-3 or you can do it the first year. But it's the current budget. So, go 12-3. They're coming before us anyway with the video. They get all at once. All right, so the adoption meeting is the second meeting. The public first one is just to bring it up. Yeah. You got so that. That's fine. Yeah. It's not the day of the vote. All right. Okay. You got it? Here to here. Come on, Miguel, keep going. I'm sorry. I know. I know. No problem. Uh, next item on the agenda is just uh, a number of uh, task uh, yep. orders, mm -hmm. proposals. We've um, gotten one for. Highway 5 and Douglas Boulevard, State Route 92 and Riverside, and Maxim Road sidewalk extension. Yep. And uh, the the one for the sidewalk, let me just confirm that. But this is indeed the sidewalk. Yes. Uh, it came in at $114,126.79. Okay. Uh, so that. That would be to get that project going. Mm -hmm. The two intersection projects are came in at for the uh, Highway Five and Douglas Boulevard came in at one hundred and sixty-three thousand three thirty-five and eighty-nine cents, okay. and. The one for Riverside is $151,504. All of those are within, uh, uh, they, they are in line with uh, what would normally be expected uh, for that type of design uh, scope. Yep. And um, the, the question would be to move them forward, um, are they all? going to still be funded out of SPOS as they have been tagged. My expectation would be that that's the case. Now, this would be, this would come out of the allocation that's already made for that for the project. Therefore, it will, it will reduce the total that's available for the next phase. Mm -hmm. This is sidewalks, right? Sidewalks, uh, sidewalk extension for the gap between yeah. our Maxim Road project and Cobb County. Yep. Yeah. So, correct. But all of them have all three. Were you just asking about Maxim? Yeah. Or all three. three. You're already all three, but it's the collective dollar. Yeah. So, first one's turn lanes, mm -hmm. possible signal alteration, utilities. Yeah. The second one's traffic signal. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, city is sidewalks. Right. So. Not really we gotta go. We didn't have 
didn't want this situation. It's so already. It, it's already in process. In process. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, these are the last two that were, we added. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And, and to, to your point, uh, Chair, that contract has been awarded. Mm -hmm. So so it's in process. And at, as of now, there is no financial commitment from us. We're still on the hook if something mm -hmm. comes up. Like, yeah, yeah. But there is nothing uh, that we need to call right. Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. So, Director Valentine, um, the presentment of these these are task orders. You need but, to move them forward. Yes, I, I, I would need a recommendation from the committee to take them to the board uh, for award. Mm -hmm. Right, and they fit within our current existing SPLOS dollars. Okay. All right, so this is this the the Anawaki operational improvements bucket? Where, 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 no. where is this specific source? Was this actually a project that had its own task? It was the million dollar safety. That's what I'm talking about. That's Which was that from two down. traffic signals. Yep. And then the street lights were half a million. Correct. Right, so we're taking it from that source. And so out of that million dollars, what's remaining when you add all this in? So out of the street lights, I mean. It's a million dollars total, so you're taking everything out of that million. That's mm -hmm. what was left. So the street lights, two hundred fifty thousand feet is what was allocated on paper. We haven't taken anything out of it. Actually, the the Highway Five and Douglas Boulevard. No, that's a different. Yeah. That's a different one altogether. That's totally separate. So that's funded um, sort of by itself. It's its own project. Yeah, yeah. its own project. Okay, give right. me the stuff just coming out this me So, and um, and the sidewalk project, uh, I think we it's funded included, that separate. It's included in the sidewalk. Yeah, so the, so the only one that would come out of the safety component would be the Riverside and 92. Yes. That's correct. Riverside and 92. Um, Mount Vernon is already in place. So is that coming out this morning? No. Mount Vernon is not. All right, so go back to Anawaki. It is, but we're hoping it's zero. Yeah, as of now, there's no... As of right now, it's zero. I think. Right. So go back to it now, Chair, just as a side. But and, and Miguel, to your point, the left turn lane at Anawaki to get us back to this. Is this where we now expand the scope? We had this conversation. That, that, that would be a simple. consideration that, uh, that uh, it, would, it would give us an advantage to be able to expand the scope uh, from the riverside at 92 to incorporate uh, Anawaki as well. Yep. Now, the, the, this particular proposal is for the full scope, the full design and permitting to guide us through the process. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily have to commit to the full scope for Anawaki. I see. But we could do the preliminary work and identify, do the concept analysis essentially, right. identify what it would take to solve that problem, and then that would come back to the board and to the yeah. committee first. And but but isn't, that, isn't that what your on-demand standby engineers, that's what they were supposed to do in these moments? Mm -hmm. Come back and sculpt this for us. Is that not the spirit of what these guys were for? Mm -hmm. right. So I just, we can get there, right? Yes, we can. Okay. All right, so let's stay on task for what's at the take right now. We're doing Make your motion. And what you need. Yes, I make a motion that uh, the committee recommend to the board that they approve task orders for Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard. State Route 92 and Riverside, Maxim Road Sidewalk Extension Projects. So moved. Second. Second. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Here, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. just had to ask. All right, all right, so we got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Keep moving. Make sure we acknowledge mm -hmm. Jessica, the source of funding and exact knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The maximum road sign was 114,126 yep. and 79 cents. Okay. All right, we're doing good. We want to go back to turn. Okay. All right. Good, uh, all right. Uh, next item is a also a potential task order, but for discussion purposes here. Uh, we have received a proposal or uh, an application from Fox Hall to uh, grant them a permit for the development. And included in that proposal were bridges that were designed not to county standards but to other standards. We had discussion about this several times and at the time uh, what 
the discussion centered about is if a design is made to DOT standards and county standards, then we, we know how to compare those. They have been already vetted by GDOT, and so we would be able to do the review ourselves. Yep. But if it's something different, then we are not structural engineers. That certainly I'm not. And so we would need somebody else to, we would need a consultant to be able to analyze that and uh, give us a recommendation as to whether it's a viable solution or not. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. The application came in two and a half weeks ago, as I recall. Uh, well, the application has been sort of making its way through the process, but the final push to get full approval uh, came in about two and a half weeks ago. So we're being asked to analyze this new plan for the roads private. Were you asking us? Because you know about the golf. Like, why are we doing this? Is it a public road or is it private? Well, that is the $64 million question because um, they uh, are indicating that it is going to be private. However, the plans show the right of it. So it is not entirely clear whether they intend for it to remain private. You need to tell us, though, how to incur money on private property. you got to be a little bit more clear than this. So I'm, I'm be more specific. Don't be vague. We're too, not, not you personally, you know I'm not saying you. Mm -hmm. But they need to be a little bit more specific on this. You're going to incur expenses. Is it public or private? Don't try to play us out and just see, I mean, how much would this cost us? Let's just put this up right here. What are we being asked? Uh, we, I, don't, I don't have a but, figure. But I, I'm thinking somewhere in the perhaps twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's okay. Well, okay. So Mark, administrator, county director, explain. Is this a formal application, or is this just a, a side ask? In other words, have we done this before? Do we need to take action on this? Is like, are we like over record? You're required to respond within 72 hours. So my question is, operationally, do you have a standard in place to respond to these type of things? In other words, I'm not certain I'm at this point, but I'm sure I just want to strike a check for 20 grand to go look at this when I'm like, are we even? I'm doing the best I can. Me personally, if they're private, it's all on me. As long as I've got a PE that stamps them, I'm good. No action. No action. No action. Mm -hmm. not there enough. If they end up being public, we need to check. Mm -hmm. you, he can't answer that. I'm not asking him to defend it. It needs to be clear coming in the door. If you're at this point, if you're at the table, you ask me to write a check, then one more time, have it together. We just had this conversation. Like, you come to us, you're asking us, like, well, which is it, public or private? But we don't know, so there's no action to be taken at this moment. I don't want to put you in a place that you have to defend what they're asking. So that's what I was asking. Was there a and the bill of defense, we're, be, we're being pushed by Fox Hall. We're not getting all the answers from Fox Hall. Right. So actually, right now, until you get further. Now, Terry, are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until you get more questions. Mm -hmm. You can't push us unless there's some type of, do you have a, a policy in place from a development service perspective that says you will respond in a certain period of time that will support you if there's a, a if there's not, and it's just an ass from the side, then we need more information. Yeah, just to, to give you a little background, yeah. they, they've applied for a permit, and until we resolve this issue, we're not approving that permit, at least not from our perspective. We're giving us the answer. So, so, well, that, that's the answer. We, we arrive at the same juncture right. from different They're pushing angles. them to us to escalate, and we're like, right. no, we will support staff mm -hmm. and chair. They won't have enough information. No action. <coughs> no action. Okay. All right, very good. Thanks. Um, the next item on the agenda is uh, we have completed, uh, or at least completed the first phase of the reviews for the um, RFQ responses for the comprehensive transportation plan. And um, the next, uh, there was a request, as I recall, when we started this process for the committee to remain involved in the process.
Mm -hmm. And so the next step would be for presentations from the group. There were four proposals that were made. Uh, we've analyzed all four. And uh, normally we would ask for three of them to come back and do presentations. The third and the fourth are so close that it's probably uh, just as well to have them all four come back. We've done that before, I believe, in, in transit services brought back all four because it was only four. So okay. that would be uh, that would be my recommendation. And uh, okay. the, the target for, uh, there would have to be a call meeting of the Transportation Committee. And the target meeting date is December 4th. All right, so stay there. All right, let me make sure I get this right. So you, you had a process, uh, was this, now, I'm just asking, I'm not going to go with this. There was a process that you go to look at this. This started in your department and went to um, purchasing, or did it start in purchasing and come to you? I it started in purchasing, came to us, okay. and uh, we did the analysis, and then we turned that over to purchasing. Okay, so yeah. they just compiled, pulled it all together. Here you go. You did the technical. Yes. So you did the technical. That's fine. So you sent it back to purchasing. What did they do? Back well, we just we just sent it back to them uh, okay. recently, so they, they haven't done anything. But we've requested because there is a provision in the RFQ <coughs> that we would request presentations by the respondents. So that's what we want. Right. All right. So, all right. So based on that, so for the record, so there was basically acknowledged the, the four firms for for what we're doing. I mean, it's, and based on your recommendation to bring all four back, so. Who are the four firms? Uh, Jacobs, Roy Engineering, BHB, and the fourth. I just want them all to be a record. I don't want anybody to close though, but they didn't acknowledge us. Who is the fourth firm? Yeah, I, 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 okay. So, but again, your point, hopefully before this meeting is over, we're going to make a recommendation uh, to call a special call meeting mm -hmm. of the full board of commissioners on December 4th, which is a Wednesday. It would be the transportation committee. Because we're not at that stage yet. There is a, once they do the presentations, then that would give us all the information we need to do the selection. And then we would have to, as a committee, make a recommendation to the board as to who to award. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brown. Some of the other major projects that we've done were the board, the board of commissioners. They get to see it, right? All right, so go back to if you had more than one, if you had six or seven people, and we will it down to a top three. Basically, we bring in the final two and the final. I mean, I'm just like, okay, this is capital transportation plan. This is major comprehensive plan, also involved with board board commission. Real careful in not letting their voice be involved. All right, so I, I uh, maybe we can do it, make it a joint meeting. Uh, um, the transportation committee and the purchase committee, uh, which allows a, a more broader group to see this. I just don't want it to be buried in the sense that nobody else gets to see it. Um, it it's that major. So 
So something to think about. Until you find the fourth one, let's keep. Was that the last item on this agenda? No, there's there's a couple more. All right. Well, you got to find us the fourth one before we take an action. But duly noted. I just want to keep going, I'm sure, because I know you got another meeting. We got to keep going. We go go to the next one. Let's come back to this. Okay. All right. We'll come back to it. Okay. Yep. Okay. The the uh, next item on the agenda is that list that you were looking at is okay. the LMIG uh, program list for yep. 2020. I got mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I do have a handout. Yes, it's on that. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, essentially, yep. Yep. this yep. year, That's all that because of the funding limitations, uh, yep. this is this is a smaller program. But, uh, this is uh, what we're looking at. These these are based on uh, the results of uh, the new pavement management program assessment, and so we've provided the. Pavement condition of PCI index of the road, and uh, because we are likely to be doing the work in house, we're targeting roads that are not, uh, uh, they don't need full reconstruction, also because of the funding limitations. So we've uh, tried to balance as best as as we could between the four districts, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, that puts us. Uh, uh, one million eight hundred seventy-five thousand and some change, yeah. which is uh, what we would need to cover uh, to be able to get the full GDOT grant and the match. So, All right. Um, so, for the record, for each commission district, can you just say total not dollars, just or total mileage? Sorry, total mileage. Total total mileage. It's is well actually in, in feet. Uh, or feet so no. District 1, 10,349 feet. District 2, 9,979 feet. Uh, we used to say miles, and translating the feet, in 10 years I've never heard of feet. What does that mean by miles? That's what it sounds like. Miles is two miles. It sounds like 1,280 miles. feet per mile. Right. So all these are approximately two miles. Yeah, it's slightly under two. <laughs> So that way you're trying to like, man, just say the number. Well, it's, like, it's okay. Know, it, it's interesting because when, <laughs> when I when I developed um, the the okay. estimate, I had the conversion in miles. I didn't want to confuse things. I had an extra line and I took it out yeah. for purposes of this. But but in any event, they are slightly under two miles per district, and um, they cover. You know, quite a few roads. Again, we targeted roads that we can hand both handle in house right. and are not this small unduly, quick wins. Uh, needing uh, you know mm -hmm. reconstruction. Part. No, I, I and I appreciate that. I appreciate that you know, how you want to frame this. But it's almost like I said, just be honest with the citizens. All we can do in house is less than two miles. Just tell them. Mm -hmm. You've got a full swath and stuff, so we're like, we're rolling, but this is, your budget will only allow this. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe because we, we, obviously last year you guys did a phenomenal job with almost five miles, 5.9 miles. No, $5.9 million mm -hmm. worth of, of, of money dedicated to the swaths uh, resurfacing. So I don't want it to, I don't want you to feel slighted by your efforts and your commitment to it. It's just this year, steady. It's okay, Miguel. It's less than a mile. I'm like, okay, that's only about a mile point four for me, and that's okay. I can carry that message that says, okay, it's coming, but right now we went high, now we got to air ball, and just tell them, but I don't want to bury it's less than a mile. It's okay. It's okay. Miguel, okay, I said, you always think about what you would like to see on him this Have you taken a look at John West? I believe that's in District 4. Mm -hmm. Tell him when I drive that. And this Have you taken a opportunity? Yes, we we've we've looked at that. We can take we can follow up and take a look at that. Uh, okay. Now this list would it be consistent if I went and got you, know, you were at my town hall meeting recently and we handed out District Two's um, road rating that was performed by Moreland for us, a one off contract that we amended their spots to accommodate this. Uh, which is really needed and necessary. And I know you're going through training based on the update. Well done. Mm -hmm. So if I took this list right here, would it match that list that we handed out at that town hall? That's my the, the rows that are on here with the appropriate rating and all matching identical to what was there, of course, 
these uh, are just a subset of what we wrote down. I understand. Mm -hmm. But what, it ma what the numbers match. The numbers match identity. That's all I want to know. Yeah. So, Madam Chair, this is the list. Mm -hmm. This is the list. So you can't you arrive at the list just based on the, the, the capacity to be able to fit it evenly as much as you could within mm -hmm. the bucket. Okay. All right. All right. So what do you want to do? Pass this on to the full board of commissioners as the adopted or the recommended um, LMA program to the budget? Correct. Um, like an emotion as stated. So moved. Second. I get a motion to second to pass this LMA 2020 on to the full board of commissioners based on this district um, rec, uh, this district mapping um, by the, the county's director of transportation. We got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Gary, did you say okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, real quick, did you get an answer yet on who the fourth firm was? Not yet. Working on it. Anything else? Sorry, did you get satisfied? Can I, can oh, yes. May I, may I bring something else oh, up? But yeah, are we okay? Other than that issue? No, we have one more thing. Okay, come on, let's keep going. But, but let Gary... All right, we'll pay it. Okay. Very close. Now, I apologize for not having this on the agenda. It just slipped my mind. But what I would like for the uh, the committee cons to consider and then uh, pass along to the full board, if, if the committee so chooses, is that uh, I would like for us to consider during the month of December to have all rides on Connect Douglas fixed route and paratransit service. At no charge for a, this would be our Christmas present to the citizens of Douglas County for helping make our, our first few months of service uh, a success. Mm -hmm. So, do a, do a quick favor. So, I take we got three, four months of operation. Just give me the average number of people. Now, give me an average. How many dollars? What are we saying? How much is that bonus? If, How much is that? It's a real if, number. It's okay. I'm three, okay. It's it would be three and five thousand dollars that we wouldn't have if, if they were like run free in December. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Three and five thousand dollars. Three and five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with the recommendation. It's full board for consideration. Mm -hmm. I have no problem. So it's start uh, December one through thirty first. Well, it, it would just start right after the board of prisons. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So do you want to make it? The whole month, or do you just do it during the period around the holidays? In other words, backing up from December 31st to maybe a week before Christmas, or you're saying from the holiday, Thanksgiving, all the way out? Not from like December the 3rd through January the 2nd. Mm -hmm. Right, so that, that would be December the 2nd. Yeah, that might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be the service. That would be actually making a vote. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so let me ask a question. Are are our advice, are consultants still here? Yes. yes. All right. Well, all right. So, local, would this help by saying that it's free? And I get it. How would you now? How would you take that? Because this is new. That wasn't in the plan. So, what? How would you take advantage of this this freeness? I mean, this is only spot. And there's no obligation for what you would say. But I'm just curious. Um, actually, we've had discussions of what to do in the holiday. So that uh, one slide, if you recall, for social media. Um, that posting was open-ended, meaning the holiday schedule, if it were to be changed, or holiday hours, if it were to be changed. Okay. So on our end, the, uh, we would be ready to go as those dates I carry mm -hmm. So we would be prepared to have that messaging within the marketplace okay. for social media as well. But we wouldn't be changing the schedule. You're just talking about the dollar. The dollar. Correct. Correct. So the messaging within the marketplace will be ready to go upon the dates I Gary just mentioned. They'd be saying what to, for example. So, um, not only print, but online. Um, so, the current uh, information that we have out in the marketplace with Chapel News and Views and Hometown Advantage in the current yeah, Instagram and, yeah. and Facebook um, messaging. I, I just sent you mm -hmm. Can you also get, 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 some, get some regular uh, mm -hmm. free coverage as well. You can absolutely get free coverage. That's, that's good stuff. That's so, good um, on our end, it be a stack um, we would utilize all resources. Including right. radio advertising. Mm -hmm. Print, print, press, press releases. Yeah. And current ads. Mm -hmm. So it's just changing the message. 
Madam Chair, just to explore within your uh, authority based on the new policy. It's I for this. It's for the seat to the board, board just to let them know because it is an operation. Everything we say that we would change regarding the system of elected board commissioners. Oh, yeah. But the dollar amount. I'm very much on board. Okay. Any we would consider that as a distraction. Oh, okay. To the <laughs> yeah, he get the he blew the route, right? Okay, he got caught up. He got, yeah. Yeah, no. he got caught up in the Christmas period. <laughs> that's that's that time next wise, level. I guess okay. one, of, one, of the, one of the just because of time wise, does he have to go before the full board? But he'll be on on the third. We yes. we would take it to the board on. On the, on the second, the second, second order, workshop, mm -hmm. and with uh, if they approve it on the third, we would have this to go into effect like on the fourth. Okay, so we we'd immediately kick off our advertising promotion. We we have a what if scenario we prepared then. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm saying we'd be ready to go with it. Okay, so the what if work, scenario, work, work session, the second, mm -hmm. vote the third. Third, right. so maybe maybe have it ready to get on the fourth. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. And wait again. That's fine. All right, so let me just, uh, since we're going to play with this, and said, can I get a rec? You, go ahead with your recommendation. I recommend that we take to the full board of uh, commissioners uh, the request to have uh, all rides on Connect Douglas Fixed Ride and Paratransit Service Free from December 4th through January the 2nd. All in favor? So, let me start. So a motion? Got a second? second? Any discussion? So we're acknowledging, so part of my discussion is we acknowledge that we're going to forego about what? Three to five thousand dollars. Three to five thousand dollars. I want that in the record. Um, Jessica? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We got a motion and a second. Um, any more discussion? Mark, are you okay? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. So operationally, y'all are ready for this. Then yes, if sir. there's a pop and like, woo, everybody ride what you want, but are y'all ready? We're ready. All right. So we got a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor of the recommendation to the full board say aye. Uh, uh, Jessica, mm -hmm. yes, Ken? Yes, sir. Right. Okay, I got an answer on the fourth. Uh, responded to the CTP. All right, request. so say them all for again, just for my Okay, okay. it is Jacobs, VHB, Croy Engineering, Roy, Croy, Croy, okay. and Modern Mobility Partners is the fourth one. Okay. All right, so your recommendation to bring all back on a special, so I got to do a special call meeting for the um, Transportation Committee. Correct. On oh, December 4th, which is a Wednesday. Right, we got to be, um, continue on all y'all being available for that, but I'm, I'm fine with that. We're going to bring them back. We still got to get to the full Board of Commissioners. So let's talk about the timing of this. So on 12-4, we make a recommendation. You only have one more meeting left in the year, Madam Chair, without calling a special call for this, which I disagree with, to, to go to a special call just for this law. So that means on your, your vote day of your budget, we're going to have this as a separate line item. Um, are you intending to have, like, so what, what do you talk to as the timing? I'm trying to talk this out. So we're awarding this contract. If, well, we would bring them back on the 4th. Yep. And then we would. The value right there. And then we would make a recommendation to the board for award of the contract mm -hmm. at the next meeting, which would be the second meeting in December. The 16th, 16th, 16th and 17th. Right. So, so no presentation to the full board, just no, just to the committee and the recommendation to the board. That would be All right, so here's what I mean, um, which is, I, I just want to go to that. Um, so in that you're going to have you've got a a writ you've got a quantitative evaluation currently of these four firms is that accurate? That is accurate. Mm -hmm. That information is going to be mail available to this committee so we can be prepared going into obviously the what I'm going to call the oral or qualitative presentation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So so then between you got a now make sure I understand the methodology. We've, we've done this before here. So we've got um, the quantitative, there's already those the technical that was written in. Now there's some points given for that. Now you've got the oral presentation, and there's points given for that. And then at the end of the day, there is a total number, and out of that, there's going to uh, be a record date to the full board. Is that the process? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Mark? Yes, sir. So, um, go ahead with the recommendation. We'll call a special call meeting on pending everybody being low. Just because you just we just made that date up, but unless. So, go ahead. Okay, so I, I make a recommendation. Make a motion commissioners. that we recommend yeah. that the committee recommend to the full board that we're going to do a special call. That we will do a special call to consider the responses to the comprehensive transportation plan update request for qualifications, and then from there we'll have a recommendation to the full board. That didn't go right. Let's do that again. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. All right, so let me try this. I'd like to make a recommendation um, from, the, from the committee to call a special call meeting on Wednesday, December 4th, 2019, to consider the qualitative presentation of four firms that have responded to our capital transportation plan. And out of that, um, we will pass on the recommendation after evaluating them to the full board of commissioners. At the very next meeting, which is 12 16. Sounds 17. good to me. Got that? Mm -hmm. Yes. I believe about Jessica. Jessica, you. you okay. You good, Mark? Mm -hmm. You sure you have good? Jessica's got it. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we got it. We got a motion. Second. We got a second. Motion, second. Any discussion? I'm sure you okay. Mm -hmm. You okay with the timing? It, that won't impact the budget. It's just something, it's just a time to work in. We just need to remind the yeah, whoever. Yes, ma'am. See the number of that? Mm -hmm. Lisa and Lisa. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we got a motion and a second. Any other further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anything else needs to come up? Okay, please? yes, one more item. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's for a discussion now. We can make a decision or we could decide not to decide. But essentially, the schedule of meetings for next year, we've been requested to come up with that I, I would recommend that we consider changing the time uh, well not the time so much the date that we meet uh, because it's presenting it's putting it at the end of the month for purposes of adding new items so on a month that has 31 days I got three weeks to wait essentially between when we consider something here when it can go to the board. A lot of times that's not an issue, but sometimes it, it can be critical. So I would, I would like for us to consider moving the meeting from the third Tuesday to the second Tuesday or something like that. Well, see, the second Tuesday puts us... Uh, in between the meeting. Yeah, you guys are the ones that are busy doing off weeks, right? But up for, for me, though, for, for the district commissioner, it's, I, but I don't want to come here every week. I'm going to come here. I stack my calendar based on when I need to be here. And so I got all my committees all during the time that I'm doing. So I get that every now and then you may have an opportunity that you may need this, but my need to only come in here part time has to be important to me. So I, I mean, if you have a need Tuesday? for it, we can accommodate. What about the first Tuesday? First Tuesday, we start out at 8 30 in the morning with Parks and Rec, then we have a commission meeting. Then at 2 o'clock, we have a final meeting. Let's, let's think about it. Come back with a, let's talk about it. We get the special call meeting that's coming up, and then you can bring up doing that as a quick um, administrative item prior to us going into these evaluations. Can we do it that way? Yeah, we do. Let's think about it. I'm not saying no, no, I'm just thinking that the timing is like, okay, well, come up with something. I'm fine. No issues. All right. Anything else, Miguel? No, sir. Mark, County Administrator. Good. I'm good. Madam Chair. Yes. All right. Absolutely. If there's nothing else needs to come before this transportation committee meeting, let it stand adjourned. <laughs> We're running.